Okay, now our second speaker is Di Lee. Now Di Lee is a symbol of the Australian dream. She fled Vietnam with her mother and two sisters during the fall of Saigon in 1975. Four years later, she and her family first came to Australia, that was in 1979, and they settled in Wollongong. She was 11 years old, as they never ask a lady her age, but she's admitted it here. That's okay. She was 11 years old and she had to uh, learn English quickly to blend in with the community. She then moved to Cabramatta with her family. Di completed her HSC and then studied for an arts degree while beginning a career as a journalist and raising a family. Di is now an acclaimed journalist with the ABC Radio's National Social and History Unit where she produces radio documentaries. She became a journalist so that she could be the voice but for people who had no voice and share their stories. Di has run for Parliament so that she can continue to be the voice of those people in our community at, of Cabramatta. She, um, Di grew up here in Cabramatta and it's where she began her career as a journalist and it's a place where she feels deeply connected to and closely identifies with. She now wants to be the voice of this amazing community and to represent the people living here. So I'd like you to welcome Di Lee, please. Welcome to Australia. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, David. And um, thank you to the Fellowship of the Roundtable for the opportunity to speak with you here today. And um, I feel like um, I grew up um, on King Arthur and uh, Genevieve, uh, the tales of, uh, of King Arthur. So the Fellowship of the Round Table reminds me of the Fellowship of the Rings. Oh, it was that um, uh, Anyway, um, police and politics is a rather huge and complex subject, and I will not pretend to be an expert on the uh, matter. So I will leave that to Tim Priest, former policeman and also author of Enemies of the State, who had years of experience with both topics to delve into what I see as a rather challenging subject. I will talk in general terms uh, and from a viewpoint of a former journalist, filmmaker, and now as someone who has the taste of uh, politics within a party, the Liberal Party. From my perspective, there's politics involved in everything that we do. So in terms of the police force, it would be no different. For me, there are more questions than any grant statements. What is the role of police nowadays? What are their main roles? Is it to protect our family? Is it to protect our children? Is it to prevent criminal activities at street level, at office level, in the homes? And what level of interaction should we have with our police? Is there trust between the, the people and the police? Is there trust between the police and the administrative bodies who manage policing? How should police manage crime within a culturally diverse society that we live in? Should crime be labelled according to ethnic groups that make, um, to make police work easier? Or would that simplify the process and in the end we would be painting a whole group with the same brush when the activities came from a few bad apples? I will now speak from the perspective of a journalist covering stories in the Cabramatta area during the many um, during the period that many pro would probably know as the height of the drug problem. Uh, that would probably be in the mid '90s uh, to the early 2000s. During that period, I met many individuals from the police, drug dealers, drug users, social workers, dis distraught parents, relatives, and victims. Having read the book by Phil Dickey that led to the Fitzgerald Inquiry in 1987 to 1989, and having watched The Moonlight State by Chris Masters on ABC's Four Corners, I, was, I became a very cynical journalist. It coloured my view of the police force and their activities. Of course, there were exceptions. I have met uh, a few policemen during this period who wanted to contribute to the community in the Kalamata area, who wanted to make a difference, 
who wanted to be a bridge between the community and the police force. Um, one particular was um, um, Gary Raymond, who I also actually was asked, but was uh, tried to get him to come and speak um, today, but he was not able to. He worked a lot with the young street kids um, in Kamramada in those days, and he just reached out and tried to connect with them uh, and looked beyond the, 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 what he was seeing, trying to understand their backgrounds and why they ended up doing what they were doing. Um, I didn't have the privilege to meet uh, Tim Priest. Uh, I think he came into the picture right after I, I um, moved away from covering stories in the area. But I know from feedback that I've heard from the community, uh, especially those impacted by the high levels of drug dealings and the consequences of the activities, they were grateful when initiative, an initiative uh, brought the police force and the community together to find a solution to the growing problem in Cabramatta. And I know that I think uh, Tim, you played a very active role in that during that period. Um, but I would argue that the politics of the day during that period was to contain the drug problem in Cabramatta um, and that the inaction by a certain section of our society to address the problem and to sweep the problem under the carpet only escalated the situations. Um, following many deaths, overdose and calls from the business community in the Cabramatta area and few um, poly police pe uh, people like Tim Priest Politicians finally intervened. With the support of the community and with some level of communication between the people living and working there and the police force, a proactive approach was taken to address the drug problem. My understanding is that it got dispersed rather than just kept within the Cabramatta electorate. Um, now, you know, the police, uh, as Charlie mentioned, uh, became a police service, so there wasn't that, um, what you would call a tough love approach to the whole problem. Um, I won't be delving into that because, like I said, uh, I'm not an expert. I will, um, Tim is, is more of an expert in that area. I, I can only speak briefly, generally, in regard, as, as, a, as a former journalist covering some of the stories. Karamata, I can say today, is not the same as it was back then. Um, the, the place that you do actually, you know, overcome and have a breakthrough uh, fear barrier of what the place would be like. You can visit that and it is very vibrant and there are lots of business activities there. Uh, and I can say that there's some confidence has been restored in the community, some. There is some police presence, but still not enough. There is still some trust, but not enough. There is still some respect not enough. There is some security, not enough. I can continue. Um, like Charlie mentioned before, I think um, there is a lack of trust within our police um, service. And I think it doesn't do service to the good policemen who've made a lot of sacrifices and who's really committed to do their job well that are left to um, do policing, which is to protect our society, to be uh, the force to make sure that our children, our families, uh, are, are our crime is prevented and they are protected. Um, but how effective is our police force today? How well do they know the laws they are upholding? Um, I think. The police force, as Charlie mentioned, uh, you know, the commissioner can be sacked by the minister. So the police force really rely on the state parliament to create laws in order for them to uphold. I think another question for our the community to be asking is how well do police officers know, know, know the laws they are interpreting? Are the police force being updated on new amendments to existing laws? And is the state government doing its best to offer workshops for police officers so they can continuously update their knowledge and skills. I think we all um, get rusty over time. So, you know, uh, like the police force, like everybody, we need to update enough skills and, and, and improve our knowledge um, uh, as, as our society evolves and as different groups, different communities 
uh, evolve. Um, community relies on good laws in order to live in a safe and harmonious society. And as Charlie said, the problem with our community is the level of apathy uh, in trying to understand the basics of New South Wales criminal law and how they can participate in conjunction with the police force in minimising crime. Crime exists in all sectors of our community. It has no age or sex gender barrier and can affect every single person in our state. It is our responsibility as good law and abiding people to educate those around us and to work with our local police on local crime issues. Um, we have to take responsibility to get into actions, as Charlie said. Um, so I think that, you know, according to the Fellowship of the Roundtable, one of your main statements was that you exist to raise awareness, uh, raise consciousness and to work for creative social change and your enemies are ignorance, uh, apathy and fear. So I think this kind of forum really gives us the opportunity to discuss these kind of matters. Um, and so I, you know, thank you for asking me to contribute to this discussion and um, I hand the podium back to David Duffy.